Hello everyone and welcome back. It is Troll speaking. Today we are going to talk about really interesting and also a bit advanced topic and it is about unmanaged code in C Sharp. I will show you how to create your own unmanaged code, how to call this unmanaged code from C Sharp and also how you can interact with low level programming language like C, C++ and also low level libraries like Windows libraries from the C Sharp application. So stick around, let's get started. Before diving into details, let's try to understand why actually we may need to interact with low-level libraries with low-level programming language like C and C++. So the case here is low-level languages provide a better performance from the application perspective. So we use C Sharp for general purpose, but mostly we develop enterprise applications using C Sharp. But if you need to interact with low-level devices like camera, I don't know, the USB devices, maybe the additional some sort part devices you can work that the robotic devices then it would be better to interact with these devices using C and C++ libraries and also when you integrate some devices to your application you will mostly face with C C++ libraries of course for most of them we have the wrapper C sharp library but in some cases we may not have this C sharp library and you may directly need to interact with C, C++ libraries. Okay, so for that reason, this lesson is really important to understand how it is possible for us to not to write the code in C sharp, but invoke all these functionalities from different libraries written in different programming languages like C and C++. Let's first try to use Windows operating system libraries from C Sharp. In our C Windows folder, we have System32 and System64. In our System64, we have user 32 DLL file. This DLL file is responsible mostly working with user interactions, message books, etc. So we will use this user 32 DLL. Of course, the .NET also behind the scenes uses a lot from the Windows libraries. For example, when you use message box in your WPF application, in your Windows form application, they are just delegating functionality to System32 DLL. So now let's directly work with System32 DLL. So I'm going to create a new project here, add new project, and I will create a simple console application. Let's call it user32 console app. And I will use .NET 8. It doesn't matter. You can use any .NET version you want. And here in our system32 DLL, we have a message box functionality, okay? This, the, this is the same message box which we use in our WPF and Windows form application. Using platform invocation or using a different decompilers, you can check this 32 DLL and see the functionalities inside this DLL. This is a public functionality. This provides a special API which high level language like C Sharp or others can easily use and consume this functionality. So here we have have a message box function and we want to directly call this message box that's why we should create a special static you can use public that's also complete okay and we should use special keyword called extern and this extern helps us to declare some sort of alias to your original DLL function, okay? And we should specify the exact signature that's defined in our user32 DLL. And this is exactly written like this, message box. And it has multiple parameters and one of them is int pointer. This is the owner of the window, okay? This is, let's call it, owner and for the message box we have a message this is our 
second argument. The third argument is a caption. Okay, this is our uh, caption. And the last one is you in a type of our message box. It means, for example, you can have just OK button. You can have OK and cancel button. And we have multiple forms of the message uh, window forms. So we are using just you in to specify this type and to make this function. So you see, I am not going to implement the exact implementation because there is no need we'll just delegate implementation to our original user 32's message box functionality i am just defining the skeleton the delegate skeleton and above we should specify special attribute called dll import in our dll import first argument is which library we are going to consume this is our user 32 dll there is no need to specify full path because user 32 is already uh, integrated to our windows operating system right now we are just focusing to use the built-in libraries in windows operating system so when we run this application our uh, application will easily um, find the path to user 32 that's why there is no need to specify it and also i'm going to specify for example car set uh, let's use we can use auto also but i will use unicode in this case okay this is our message box so you see our message box doesn't have any implementation it will act just a delegator so let's call our message box okay i will use let's say int pointer dot zero that's just for matching okay hello from user 32 dll this is our message a uh, simple message is going to be our caption and i will use zero for okay message okay i will show you a different forms of this message also let's run it and wait for our result it should show some message box in our console application so let's run it and here we are this is our simple message with hello from user 32 dll okay so in this case we have zero we can specify some constant values const integer message okay let's call it zero const integer message okay cancel let's call it one and we have stop message const int message stop this is going to be a 16 okay and i want to use for example message okay cancel let's run it now we should see okay and cancel here so you see okay and cancel great and also we can specify message stop let's run it it should some sort of cancel yeah you see this is our stop okay this is how we are specifying different types that's also uh, applicable for different types of um, the windows libraries like kernel user 32 etc you can just check all the functionalities all the public apis from these dlls and just easily call them using extern and with also the mapping the declared skeleton okay that's how we are interacting with windows libraries before switching to cc++ uh, library implementation i want to mention that there is a great website called platforminvocation.net pmvoc.net and you can find most of the libraries with the functionalities like I just demonstrated like message box for example let's search for message box you, you are just searching for libraries here uh, under the, the list we have user 32 you see we have user 32 and you can just expand it and find all the relevant functionalities you're looking for for example we are looking for message box let's find it here we have the message box here it is so you see platform invocation website really easily shows you what you need to do you can just copy this functionality from here and just easily call it so you see we have alternative managed apis like system windows forms 
already uses message box and also WPF already uses this message box. In this section, I will show you how to create your own unmanaged C code and how to call it from C Sharp application. Now we'll have two different applications. One is C library. This is just, we'll have a simple multiply function. We'll provide multiply function to our different programming language to consume. And we'll have C Sharp application as a consumer, which will call this C library. We are not going to implement the same functionality inside our C sharp, we'll just simply delegate functionality to our C library. So we have a separate folder, C sharp code, you can create any folder you want. So I'm just creating a new file. Let's just rename it. Um, maybe the, the file .c. Okay, this is file .c. The, the C extension is for our C programming language. Okay, so I'm just providing this file to be edited from the notepad. Let's provide our include with stdioh. So if you are not familiar with C, you can just simply copy and paste. There is no need to completely write everything from scratch, but to have a full understanding, to have a full picture, I am writing everything line by line, okay? So we have multiply function here multiply and we have two arguments two integers okay integer a and integer b and let's return the result of a multiplied by b that's really a really simple c functionality now it is time to compile this so let's open our command line and from the command line let's navigate to uh, C, C sharp code. So we'll use GCC. This is our um, shared uh, library and the output of this compilation process will have file dot DLL and let's just specify file dot C. So we are specifying file dot C as a shared library and the output of this compilation process will have file.dll let's see it enter and here we have the file.dll this is our compiled result let's just simply copy this functionality go to our visual studio open our um, solution folder and here navigate to bean debug.net 8 and let's just simply paste it here okay this is our file.dll so i will specify the different dll import and for the DLL import, I will specify, I'm just importing the functionality from our file.dll, okay? This is our private, static, extern, this is our int, multiply, you should type the function name as is, okay? This is our integer A and integer B. I think that should be. Okay, let's just comment it and let's just simply call console right line and let's call multiply multiply with four and five as an arguments. Let's just simply run our application and we should get 20 at the end. So let's wait for the result. And here we are. This is our 20. So that's how we are writing our functionality and also that's how we are consuming our C, C++ libraries from our C Sharp application. Well, that's pretty much all. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like button, share, and I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye.